this is our last review section. Okay, so we're going to spend today and tomorrow on that. Friday is our review preparation day for our unit test on Tuesday. What else happens on Tuesday? Five. Homework. Let's hope not. Homework's due, right. Homework's due on test day. So all the homework from the last three sections will be due on Tuesday. Okay, just a little heads up. So this last section we're going to talk about factoring. I know you've done this before. Um, I'm not going to make this go too slow because of how familiar we, we are with most of these. You might learn something new today. That was my impression from the other classes. Uh, we learned a new technique which seemed to go very well. Okay, but let's just review factoring and the different techniques we're already aware of. If you look at the first one, 6B plus 60, what is a type of factoring technique that we could apply to this example? And it gets silent. We're talking, which is good. I'm hearing the number six. What do you think, Seth? We can divide out a six from every single term. So if we divide a six out of everything, we'll be left with a V and then a plus 10. What is that six called that we divided out? G, C, greatest common factor. There we go. That is a factoring technique, GCF, where you divide out or take out um, something that every single term has in common. Okay? We will always try this technique first. By doing GCF, if we're able to, we turn larger numbers into smaller, more easy to work with numbers. Okay, so we're always going to try GCF first. Can we do something similar to the next example? Is there a GCF that we can remove? What? Go, Lucas. Okay, so not only can we remove numbers, but we can also remove variables. Okay, notice how we have two x's in the first term, one x in the second term. They both can lose at most one, okay, the greatest common factor. So if we divide those out, we're left with x plus 6. Okay, GCF, we're always going to try that first. We can remove numbers and variables as long as every single term has that in common. What about the next one? Three terms this time. How can we factor a trinomial? Tri meaning three. There's kind of a process to this one. Okay, so we know what it kind of, the end result should look like. Two parentheses. By the way, factoring is the opposite or reverse of FOIL or distribution, okay? So you, normally with FOIL, you start with two parentheses and you get this. Factoring is the opposite. You're starting with standard form and creating the factors. We have a little mind game we kind of have to do with this one. What have we got to think about? What do you think, Eli? Isn't it, isn't it um, x, uh, x squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared? How did you get 8 and 1? Those are good, but how did you know those were the numbers? Don't you have to add up to 9 or just do the other way around? Okay, sometimes we get those mixed up. You want to uh, confirm, Emily? Okay, so we can label these A, B, and C. The A value is 1, understood coefficient of 1. Sometimes, I taught Algebra 1 a few years ago, okay, I referred to this method as I am factoring. It seemed to help, okay? Whenever your coefficient of A is 1, because it kind of looks like the letter I, bless you, I want you to think of two numbers that multiply to C, but add to B, okay? I am factoring. The only way you use that, though, is if the A value is 1, because it looks like an I. Okay, that might help some of you. So two numbers that multiply to 8, add to 9, those would be the 8 and the 1s. So how we use those numbers in our two groups or two factors, we have x plus 8 and x plus 9. Thank you. I'll give this to you in a second. 
Lucas. Yeah, in a second, okay? Are we familiar with that method? Okay, multiply to this, add to this. Perfect. What about the next one? Yeah. Difference of squares. All right. So the word difference, meaning subtraction, squares, meaning perfect squares. The perfect square of 16 is 4. The perfect square of x squared, x. Okay. And how can we use those perfect squares to write our two factors? What do you think, Seth? X plus 4 and x minus 4. There we go. Do you know why one's opposite and one's plus, or one's negative, one's positive? Hmm. What do you think, Lucas? It's a negative 16, so if you have to be multiplying one positive, one negative, definitely, okay? They could also be positive and negative for another reason, Eli? Uh, they have, there's no uh, middle x, so x cancels out too. Okay. Take a look at the I am that we did before, okay? The C value for this one is 16, but the B value is 0 because we don't have that middle x term. So two numbers that multiply to negative 16 but add to 0 positive and negative 4. Okay, they have to be the same number but opposites. Good. Okay, how about the next one? What factoring techniques can we apply? You see one, Lucas? Yeah. There we go. All right, GCF always first. At least we'll try it. So x squared minus 25. So there's one technique, but we got to ask ourselves, can we use another? Okay, can we keep going? And Lucas saw that this one was a difference of squares. So perfect square of 25, we have 5, 1's plus, 1's minus. Is it coming back? Yeah. Never left. Oh, it left. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. If that left, we'll, we'll see about the next one. <laughs> okay? We hanging in there, though? Okay? Let's try the next one. Can we pull out a GCF? No. no. Does it fit the I am profile? No, because no, that's a 6 and not a 1. It's clearly not a difference of squares because we're not subtracting two perfect squares together. So this must be a whole nother technique. The question is, how do we do it? No oh, no. <laughs> that might happen sometimes, but there's something. What do you think, Seth? You could. I'm going to come back to you later, OK? There's another factoring technique. Quadratic formula is kind of like our last resort if factoring doesn't work at all. But there's another factoring technique. Yeah. Grouping. Have we heard that word, factor by grouping? Some yes, some no. We're going to check it out. OK? We're going to label A, B, and C. Okay. So how this one's going to be a little tricky. We'll try it out. We're going to multiply a times c together. 6 times 2, we got 12. B value is 7. So very similar to the I am process, we want to think of two numbers that multiply to 12 but add to 7. Special numbers? 4 and 3. OK. Now, there are actually two different techniques that we can use to help us factor this one. I'm pretty sure that grouping is the one that you've previously seen. Whether you remember it or not, I don't know. Okay. The other one we're going to go through today. So we're going to try grouping first, and then I'll show you the other one. Now that we found those special numbers, how do we actually go through the grouping technique? Yeah? Okay. So since 4 plus 3 add to 7, we're going to take out the 7x and replace it with a 4x and a 3x. We're basically turning 
three terms into four terms. Do you want to keep going? No. Okay, so far so good. What can we do next? The next step is kind of why it's called grouping. How can we group them? Yeah, Eli? Isn't it um, that you like parentheses? Yep. We're going to group the first two and group the second two. Now, you could have, when we replaced in the 4x and the 3x, the order doesn't matter. We could have wrote 3x and then 4x. Okay, the order doesn't matter. From here, we're going to use GCF on our individual groups. So if we look at the first two terms, we can pull out a 2 and an x, and we're left with a 3x plus 2. What can we divide out of the second group so that the leftover matches the 3x plus 2? Yeah? A 1. If you divide a 1, that doesn't change anything, right? So if we divide out a positive 1, we're left with a 3x plus 2. Okay, I'm sorry that's a little squished, but that's a 3x plus 2. From here, we should be able to write our two factors. Go ahead, Eli. 2x plus 1 and 3x plus 2. Perfect. Okay, so notice the 2x plus 1 were the GCFs that you removed from the individual groupings, and the 3x plus 2 was the kind of leftover factor, and they matched. Okay, these have to match in order for grouping to work. If they don't, it's a no-go. I'm pretty sure we've seen that last year. Yes. Maybe. Yes, kind of, maybe, but I don't remember. All the above, okay? I'm going to show you a different method. Whether you like it or not, it's completely up to you, okay? I'm going to let you choose which method you uh, like more to tackle these types of problems, okay? This one's called divide and slide. Bless you. Kind of a fun name. Okay. How this one works is actually convenient, okay? It starts out the same way as grouping. We still have to multiply A times C, we still have to label B, and we have to figure out those special numbers, okay? We still have to do that. But from here, we're simply going to write x plus 4 and x plus 3. Okay, those special numbers we found, those are our factors. This is why it's called divide and slide. Okay, this a value, in this case 6, we will divide by those special numbers that we found. 4 divided by 6 simplifies to 2 over 3 and 3 over 6 simplifies to a half. Okay, That's the divide part. Here's the slide part. If you're left with a fraction, I want you to take the denominator and slide it as a coefficient in front of the x. If you're left with a fraction, take the denominator and slide it as a coefficient in front of the x. What if it's not a fraction? Okay, good question. What if it's not a fraction? If we had x plus 4, hypothetically speaking, x plus 4, x plus 1, and our a value was 4. Okay? 4 divided by 4? 1. It stays. This does not simplify. Slide the 4. That's it. Okay? Divide and slide. <laughs> now here's the deal. Uh, I'm assuming we've never seen this before. <laughs> right? Okay. Here's probably why, okay? Because the mathematicians in this building, we love math, okay? We love the process. We love understanding why something works. I can take my time and explain to you why grouping is mathematically sound, okay? Why it works. To this point, because I haven't spent much time on it, I cannot tell you why this process works. It's more of an algorithm, like a step-by-step -step process that we are, just have to be familiar with. 
It might seem easier for you. If that's the case, you can do it every single time. If you prefer grouping because that's what you did last year and that's what you're more comfortable with, by all means, okay? But in either case, notice how we should get the same answers, okay? So the choice is yours. Do we have a preference? Yes. Divide, divide and slide. Divide and slide. Any grouping people? Completely okay. You, you might go back and forth. That's fine. Okay, whatever is up or whatever's comfortable for you, that's what you can use. All right, let's try the next one. We might have to. What do we always try first? Oh, that's with fractions. GCF, okay. What can we divide out? Yeah? Three and a negative. Okay, since the A value is negative, we might want to take out a negative as well. So we'll take out a negative and a 3. So divide everything by negative 3. We'll get 2x squared plus 3x minus 20. So GCF, that's one technique, but we got to ask ourselves, can we go further? So you got to take a look at your leftover stuff. Can we do anything there? Does it fit the IM profile? No, because that's a 2. Is it a difference of squares? No. No. All right, so we're either left with grouping or divide and slide, whatever you are more comfortable with. I want you to try this one. Okay, 2x squared plus 3x minus 20. Try to factor it, see what you get. They both start off the same way, which is nice. A times C, negative 40. B value of 3. We've got to find those special numbers. Yes. 8x plus 1. We'll check it out, okay? What were our special numbers? Multiply negative 40, add to 3. 8 and negative 5. All right. So let's go from there. Um, now, since you have either tackled this by grouping or divide and slide, just by show of hands, who did divide and slide? Kind of the majority. Grouping? You? Okay, um, I'm going to show this by divide and slide because that's what the majority did, but if you did grouping, you still should have gotten the same thing. Okay, so we're all on the same page. The kicker is, I'd be willing to bet at least one of us did this in here, you cannot forget the negative 3 that you originally pulled out. Okay? That's still a part of the problem. All right, divide and slide. We have x plus 8 x minus 5. What do we divide by? What's our a value? 2. All right, it's now 2 because we took out the negative 3. It's no longer the negative 6. Okay, divide by 2. So 8 divided by 2 simplifies to 4. Whole number, we don't have to worry about it. 5 over 2 does not simplify, so 
2x minus 5. Slide the 2 over. Yes. How do we do? Great. Pretty good? Awesome. All right. So now that we're getting familiar with factoring techniques, let's actually use those to help us solve some problems. So on the back. Notice how the ones at the top are actual equations now. We have an equal sign going on. So this means we should be able to solve for a variable, in this case, x. OK, looking at the first one, can we factor the left-hand side? Think about your techniques. Can we GCF? That's always first. No. I am profile? No. Difference of squares? Heck no. So we're left with? Divide and slide or grouping, OK? Whatever you're comfortable with. Let's go at it. A times C. Negative 12, B, negative 1. Find those special numbers and you're on a roll. All right, what were our special numbers? Negative 4 and 3. Negative 4 and 3. All right, so x minus 4, x plus 3. And since this is an equation, we still have equal 0 on the other side. OK, we're factoring the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is still 0. Uh, continuing through divide and slide. Divide by 6. So 4 over 6 becomes 2 over 3. Slide the 3. 3 over 6 becomes 1 over 2. Slide the 2. Could we get that far? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. OK. So how can we use these factors to help us solve for x? We're looking for x solutions, like x equals something. What do you think, Lucas? Set them equal to what? So one another, so you want 3x minus 2 equals 2x plus 1, like that? This one would be negative? That's a, that's a, oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Okay, so you are right in the fact that we want to set these equal to something. It's just not each other. Oh, it's equal to 0. Equal to 0 independently. Good catch, okay? Do we know why we can do that? Not because that's what I did last year, that's what I was told to do. Do we know why we can do that? You have an idea? Yeah. Uh, because um, if one of them equals zero, it's a multiplication, so if one of them equals zero, it's double and three. Take a look at this last blue line. You are multiplying two things together, and you know your answer is zero. If you multiply two things or two numbers together and your answer is zero, doesn't one of those two things have to be zero itself? Yeah? So we're trying to figure out when is each one zero, okay, independently. That's why we can break it up, because this side is zero. Okay, that's a must. It must equal zero. So let's go from here. We can add the two, divide the three, and then subtract the one, divide the two. So we actually have two solutions, two numbers you could plug into that quadratic and would give you zero. Okay. What about the next one? What do you think, Seth? Because? I like it. It needs to equal zero. That's the only way you can break up your factors. Okay. Must equal zero. 
All right, you guys can factor from there. Go through your techniques, see what works. Were we able to narrow it down to divide and slide yeah. or grouping if you did that? Okay. What were our special numbers? Uh, All right. Let's check these. So negative 12 plus 2, definitely negative 10. Negative 12 times 2, negative 24, right? We want positive 24. Negative 6 minus 4, negative 10. Negative 6 times negative 4, positive 24. So there might be two combinations that seem to work, but again, there should only be one that actually works. Okay, negative 6, negative 4. So x minus 6, x minus 4 equals 0, divide by a. Let's see, 6 over 8 becomes 3 over 4. Slide the 4. 4 over 8 becomes 1 over 2, slide the 2. Now that it equals 0, we can individually analyze each factor. Uh, add 3 divide 4, so 3 fourths. Add 1 divide 2, so a half. How do we do? Pretty good? Okay. If you tried the 12 and the 2, it might have been a little off. Okay, but I'm sure your process was right. We just used the wrong numbers. Okay, so just be careful with selecting those numbers. How are we doing with factoring? Good? Better? A lot better? Awesome. Okay, let's try a good one at the bottom. We're going to try to solve. Notice how it's an equals. What do we want to do first? Equal to zero. All right, let's think about some techniques. GCF, do we have one? Not really. You could pull out a negative, but that's just going to switch the signs. It's not really going to change the numbers in an easier way for us. So not really GCF. Definitely not I am. No difference of squares. So divide and slide. All right, we might need a calculator help for this one. Negative 2 times negative 157. 3, 14, yep. yeah, all right, B value 36, do you feel like trying to find two numbers that multiply to 3, 14 and add to 36? Um, I certainly don't, so I'm sure you don't, okay? You could try and sit there for a while guessing and checking, but I'm going to boil it down and tell you that there actually is no there are no two numbers that would work, okay? But you could try. So if we ruled out every single factoring technique, 
How else could we possibly find our x solutions? Seth, quadratic, quadratic formula. Everyone's favorite, okay? So if you can't factor, we're going to try the quadratic formula. Do we know it? Ooh, some of us do. All over? 2a. All right, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good. Have we ever heard of the quadratic formula song? No. No. Do we want to yes. hear it? No. Can you do? You, can you spare me the embarrassment, or do you really want to hear it? I do want to hear it. I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah. Okay. I am not a Grammy-nominated artist. Let, let's keep that straight, okay? So you can judge. I really don't care. But if this helps you remember it, then I did my job, okay? Do we know um, the Pop Goes the Weasel tune? Bum ba dum ba ba da da ba. Bum ba dum ba da da. Or Jack in the Box. Pop Goes the Weasel, Jack in the Box. They're, they're similar. Okay, ready? The opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a and c all over 2a. Take it or leave it. Do whatever you want. Okay? But quadratic formula song. Okay? <laughs> Let's, you have a poster. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we're going to apply it. All right, b value 36. So we need the opposite of that. Plus or minus the square root. On your calculator, b squared, okay, 36 squared. What is it? 12, is it 12 something? 1296. 1296. Perfect. All right. On your calculator, we need 4 times a times c. So 4 times negative 2 times negative 157, because we moved it over. 1256. All right, we have to subtract those two numbers. All over 2 times a. So 2 times negative 2, we got negative 4. Let's simplify. 1296 minus 1256. 40. Okay, now if you take a look at the two previous examples we did, we had two solutions for x. So most likely we're going to have two solu solutions in this case as well. I'm going to show you how to type this in on your calculator with the square roots. Okay, on your calculator, I need you to type in negative 36 plus the square root option is in blue above the x squared key. So since it's blue, we have to hit the blue second button first. That should pop up a square root symbol on your screen, and we can type in 40. I want you to immediately hit enter. So this is the value of the numerator. We are automatically going to hit divide because your calculator is going to take the previous answer, which is the negative 29.695, and divide it by negative 4 that we're going to type in. So one solution is 7.419. Okay. I want to show you what would happen if you tried to type in everything at once. Okay, Just pay attention to the screen. Negative 36 plus the square root of 40 divided by negative 4. We do not get the same thing. Okay. Your calculator is doing order of operations differently than you are on your paper. Your calculator is dividing first and then doing the minus or negative 36. Okay, so you have to be careful on how you type these into your calculator. Let's go ahead and try the other option. So negative 36 minus the square root of 40. Hit enter. Divide negative 4. 10.581. So 
So we could substitute those two values in for x and our function would equal zero. Okay? We doing okay? So far? All right. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at a different method we can solve these quadratics, okay, by using a calculator, but that's not going to take all day. So the rest of the class uh, tomorrow you can utilize as homework and question time. Friday, our review and test and homework Tuesday. We're off Monday.